Here's how we can use Lightroom's color range mask to target specific colors of the image and make it pop. As always, if you want to follow along, you can find the raw file in the description of the video. And now let's begin. As always, we want to start with the basic adjustments. So in the basic panel, the first thing I'm going to do is to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape to bring up the base saturation of the image. Then I'm going to bring down the highlights all the way, which will reveal more details, especially in the sky where we have the most highlights. I'm also going to bring down the shadows, which will boost the contrast. And let's bring up the whites for the same effect, just bringing up the contrast a notch and if we take a look at the histogram, you can see we do have a little bit of room to play around with in the darker areas. That means I'm going to bring down the blacks very gently just to tickle out a little more contrast. Perfect. Next up, I also want to work on the white balance. I do think this image could be a little bit colder. So let me bring down the temperature a little bit. And I'm also going to bring down the tint, which will help boost the green tones of the image. So right around here looks pretty nice to me. Then let me sharpen the image using a bit of texture. At the same time, I'm going to drop the clarity and I'm going to drop the dehaze just to add some kind of autumn glow effect on top. This is very, very subtle, but I think it looks much, much better this way. I'm not going to touch the vibrance or the saturation. That means we're done with the basic adjustments. So let's compare to before real quick. Right away, you can see the colors do look much better with the adjusted white balance. Also, we do have a lot more punch in the image already after the basic adjustments. But now let's use masks, specifically color range masks, to target very specific areas of this shot. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. And I would say, let's start with the sky. For that, click on the range mask down below and we are going to choose color range. I want to target the darker blue tones of the sky. So I'm picking a color from right in this dark cloud right here. Clicking on it, you can see pretty much all of the sky is selected as well as some parts of the landscape in the foreground, which we of course don't want. So just to clean up this mask, I'm going to click on those three dots right here. Go to intersect mask with and choose select sky. This way we are making sure we are only working on the sky. Now we need to further fine tune the color range mask because at the moment we are still selecting a little bit too much up there. Using the refine slider, we can either make the selection wider by bringing it up like this, or we could bring it down and narrow down the color range. So let me see, I think something like this is looking pretty good. Let's give it a try. What I want to do is to bring down the exposure very gently. I'm also going to push the contrast and let's bring down the shadows. All right, I think that's looking much better. Let me deactivate this one single mask to see the difference from before to after. You can see we have created a lot more punch by increasing the contrast for the darker blue tones of the sky using that color range mask. Now let's say we want to make these yellow flowers pop in the foreground. Again, let us create a color range mask. And then of course, we're simply going to click in one of these yellow flowers. Right out of the gate, you can see uh, the color range is a little bit too narrow for this purpose. So we need to make use of the refine slider one more time. This time we're going to bring it up just so we have a nice selection like this. You see now all the flowers are selected without affecting the grass. So that's perfect. What I want to do to make them pop is to make them brighter, separating them from the grass below. So I'm going to bring up the exposure very gently. This is looking nice. I'm also going to bring up the whites bit. And what I want to do as well is to boost the saturation because I really like this yellow tone against the green and blue tones of the rest of the image. So let's bring up the saturation, make the color stronger this way. Beautiful. Again, let me turn off this mask so we can see the difference from before to after. Much better. Now, of course, we can also target the green tones of the image. So let's do that. Again, let's create another color range mask and let me click somewhere right in here. Again, there are parts of the sky selected. So this time I'm going to subtract select sky mask to make sure we're only working on the foreground and we don't affect the sky. With this selection, what I'm going to do is I want to 
I think I want to make it a little bit darker. Let me first bring up the contrast. I'm also going to bring down the shadows. I think we could introduce some more contrast by bringing up the whites a bit. Let's add some texture, making the grass look a bit sharper. And let's try some clarity as well. Okay, now we could also alter the colors some more. I think I want to make the grass look a little greener. So I'm going to bring down the tint and let's see what this will do. Maybe like this. I also want to try bringing down the temperature, giving it a colder green tone this way. And at this point, the green tones might be a bit too strong. So I'm going to simply bring down the saturation to counter that effect. Okay, but I really like how this is looking. So again, let me deactivate this mask. So that's the image from before to after. All right, so with just three color range masks, we have targeted the three most important parts of the image, the sky, the yellow flowers, and this rolling hill landscape. So let me turn off all the masks to get a better idea. This was our image after the basic adjustments. And here we have it with just three masks applied. So I hope this little interjection into the color range mask feature will help you with your images. For this shot, this was it. But of course, we can continue fine tuning this image with some more masking. And what I want to do is I want to make the sky a little more impactful. I'm going to use a linear gradient with which I cover most of the sky like this. And I'm going to further bring down the exposure, which will make the top part of the sky darker, creating a more dramatic mood this way. And I'm also going to bring up the contrast, bringing out more of that cloud structure. Let me create one more mask for the sky. In fact, I'm going to use a simple select sky mask because I want to target the whole sky. And that's because I want to lower the saturation a bit so the blue tones don't become as overwhelming. And at the same time, I want to further bring out that cloud structure by bringing up the clarity some more. All right, that's looking nice. Let me use another sky mask and let me subtract a linear gradient. Now what I'm going to do is I'm making the bottom part of the sky brighter. This again will help making this area more interesting. So how am I doing that? That is super easy. Simply raise the exposure. Always pay close attention to this again because we of course don't want to introduce any clipping. But this is looking very solid. We could even bring up the whites and maybe some of the highlights as well. All right, that looks lovely. And then and the foreground is lacking some shadow, I think. I'm going to use a linear gradient targeting the very near foreground, which is kind of out of focus right here. And there I'm going to simply drop the exposure, introducing this shadow. Let's also bring up the contrast to make this effect stronger. Beautiful. I kind of want to do the same thing on the sky on the opposite side, however. So let me create a linear gradient on the opposite side right here. And let me pull down the exposure, making this corner a little bit darker. Let me also pull up the contrast. All right. I also want to target those trees on the hilltop. I'm going to start with a linear gradient just roughly targeting this area. And of course we don't want to affect the sky. So all we need to do, subtract and choose select sky. All right, then what I'm going to do in here is bring up the exposure, making those trees a little bit brighter. I'm also going to bring up the contrast a little and let's add some clarity. Wonderful. And finally, I also want to add some more light on the left side specifically. I'm using a radial gradient for that. I'm making it really wide but thin. Let's place the center outside of the image. And of course, let's bring up the feather to have a more natural effect. So in here, let's bring up the whites. Let's bring up the blacks for the glow. And to make the glow stronger, we can bring down the dehaze. Okay, that's looking great. And I think that's it for the masking of this image. So let me turn off all the masks to see the comparison from before to after.
huge difference much better so next up let's continue with a little bit of color grading actually i don't think there's really much going on i just want to head down into the calibration tab here i want to bring up the blue saturation a notch just to make the colors pop and let's see maybe i'm also going to bring down the blue primary hue let's see what this does to the image i don't want to shift the colors too too much but a little bit like this looks fine to me then at this point, of course, we can also sharpen the image in the details tab. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add some masking while holding down the alt key and bring up the amount of sharpening. And we're done with the Lightroom adjustments. I do feel like there's a little bit too much noise in this image. So what I want to do is to also apply some denoising. Of course, I should have done that at the very start, but I can change that now. So what I'm going to do is to simply click the denoise button and let's click on Enhance. All right, looking much better. Now we need to clean up this image. I'm going to do this in Photoshop because Lightroom is just too slow and too unpredictable for that task. So let me right click on the image, go to Edit In and choose Open as Smart Object in Photoshop. So let me duplicate this layer to have a backup. Of course, we need to rasterize this Smart Object to be able to work on it. So let's do that. And I'm going to zoom in here. And I think I'm going to get rid of these trees using the clone stem tool. So with the clone stem tool active, I'm copying an area right next to the tree by holding down the alt key and clicking right in here. Then I can place, place the brush over the tree and just brush in there once or twice and nicely get rid of it. And let's continue this for the rest. I think I need to make the brush a little smaller, however. So for this bigger bunch of trees, I'm just going to use generative fill. So I'm going to use the lesser tool and you can see me create a rough selection around those trees. Really doesn't need to be that precise. And once this is done, hit generative fill and hit generate. That's perfect. Much faster than the other way. And here's another tree. I'm going to clean it up by using the clone stem tool. Copy an area from right next to it and brush over this. Perfect. All right, then we have those trees on the left side. I'm also going to get rid of them. I'm again using the generative fill because this area is a little bit tricky to remove. Again, just creating a rough selection here. And again, hit generative fill and generate. All right, perfect. And that's it for editing this image. I hope this little tutorial on Lightroom's color range mask was helpful and interesting. If you want to add anything or if you have any questions left, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.